Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a HR tracker to track sickness, lateness, absenteeism, and even holidays. So on the screen, I've got two examples or two people listed with some information. I'm just doing the first three months, but obviously you do the whole year. And then on each right hand side of each person, I've got some analysis going off. So basically it works like this. So if I type in there S, that's a S for sickness, and then it counts sickness there. County function, counting sickness. If I type L, late, A, absence, and H, holiday. And the colors match the colors at the top, and the colors on the little chart match the same information on the top there. So basically everything that's blue will be sickness, everything that's red will be late, and so on and so on. Same for Dave Green over here, it's a different person, different criteria, but the same stuff will apply. So A for absent, L for late, S for sick, and H for holidays. Now down the bottom, I've got a formula there, same color code, but basically adding up each item. So it's adding up all the totals in this list there. You can see six sicknesses, six at the bottom. So three, four, four times late and so on and so on. So that's basically clocking it up. And that is using Countif to analyze this. This colored, colored uh, area is using conditional formatting to color it up depending on what the letter is. Uh, maybe on the absence one I should have the font for A in white. Oh, we'll do that so it's like that so you can see it. And then it's just analyzing that. So that's what I want to recreate on a separate sheet. So I'll just go into a new sheet here. Just type in I'll just do the first month, so I'll just do January so you get the idea of how it works. So I want the first seven days, like so, and then I need to leave a space for the next one, eight, nine, and so on. I'll just pull that across. So I just did the months, so I need to merge and center across the top because I want that to be... January and then I need to highlight this area I'm holding my control key down because these are not adjacent rows I just want these rows highlighting because this is where the conditional formatting is going to go to there that's it don't need that space doing but you could do it, it doesn't won't make any difference it won't do any harm if I go into conditional formatting manage rules so basically first rule is going to be Format only cells that contain, they're all going to be the same. So equals to, if I say S, the format is going to be red. The fill is going to be red, like so. Okay, new rule, second one down, format only cells that contain is equal to A. So this is absent, so format black. And this is where I didn't do on the other one, but I will do on this one. So fill is black and font needs to be white. Like that, okay. And then new rule, so we've got holidays, so equals to H for holiday. That can be, fill again, this color. Okay, and then the last one is late. So we've got sick, holiday absent sick late and that one will be blue let's just try that have a look no that's it so that's the four conditions that I want click OK and then just test that out and if you want I'm just gonna color these in and shade these in actually so they're shaded different color so if I type S it should say sick if I type A it should say absent if I type L and then H for whole. So there we go. So now what I need to have is the titles across the top on this side. So a bit of analysis before I do that, I'll have that as a blank, a blank column. So I'll just bring that in and just highlight that there. Going to format cells and just do a shading like that. 
okay so that's just blocked off and then titles across the top sick absent late and holes I'll call it holes this time so I want to put these three on the side so it's, it takes up less space put that to the top now if I just merge these into one cell then I can not have such a big space there maybe then I can bring this back up like so there we go so I want to color code this so that should be red that should be black but I need to do the font on that one so the font needs to be white late is blue this color blue and holes is that mustard color there so that's that one what I need to do here is move this down because I need some labels so just pull this down one row so that I can line this up there because I need to put S sick I need a label there for each one of these L A and H for holes so I can refer to that in my formula so now I need to use the countif function to count how many times S appears on this row and the same for absent or A L and H so equals count if open the bracket select the range the week this week now this needs to be dollar sign so I'm highlighting it because I want to pull this across and then I'm going to do the F4 function key to lock that so that's going to lock that then I'm doing a comma now I could type S and I'd have to put quotes in it because I've got it there I can just click on that and then click the tick and then pull that across and then it'll work for each one so if I put late again that should go to two and it does now I want to copy that down but obviously that row needs to change for each one so I'll just copy the labels down and do that first so copy the labels paste those down and then I'll do the counter function again so you get another go at doing it or seeing it for each one so in this one it's going to be equals count if open the bracket you select in this week again you're going to dollar sign that to lock that f4 I tend to use names to be honest so normally I would name that but not for this example so that's the formula for that one then pull that across and then just test it with something type H yep and then the same one for that one equals count if open the bracket select the range do the dollar sign so f4 the whole thing needs to be locked comma click on the cell the first one check tick pull it over test it type late yep and then this one equals count if set the range lock the range with the F4 key comma click on the first criteria click the tick pull it over test it I'll type A yep and then the last one is equals count if open the bracket select the range you don't really need to lock this one but I will do F4 comma Click on the S, tick, pull it across, test. So H, holiday, yeah. So now what you want at the bottom is basically just to sum up each one of these. So if I get a copy of the labels again, copy of the labels, paste it down one more, and then you're wanting to do the sum function and just highlight all of that really. So there's only one in there pull that across like so and then you would or I did color that in so it matches the colors at the top so you've got the same sort of color scheme all the way through 
and it's easier for you to see. You don't have to do any colours at all if you don't want, but I like to see colours. And you also might want to put a grid on this. Now, normally all borders is in here, but I like to add things up to the quick axis toolbar, and you just simply right click and then add. It's greyed out because I've already done it. And you might want this gridded off as well. Right, so, so we've now got some analysis, so we now can do our little graph. So if I highlight the titles, hold my control key down, highlight the totals, go to insert, I want a column chart, that one will do. Brings the chart into position. Now if you click on the title and then go up to the formula bar and type equals and then click on January, tick, that will always put January in there. But on ours... Uh, I don't want it to be January because we should have above there the person's name. So if I merge and center that, and I'll just call this um, Dave Green. This is his. So we click on that again. And this time we go equals Dave Green. So Dave Green will go in there, and that's what we want. Now, again, I want to change the colors of these. So I'm just going to make them match up with whatever they're meant to be, so absent is black and then late is blue and then holes is that colour actually, so that's okay and if you want to put the labels on there, if you click on this little plus you've got data labels that just put the numbers, the scores on the doors and what I what I did on mine is I just made it black because I like that colour, don't need that there and then you can resize this uh, to be whatever size you want. If you want it to be the same size everywhere, you've got this option here. But if you go into size, you've got to make sure that is not on. Um, so if I want this to be 6 by 6. That's a 6 by 6 chart, which is quite... Oops, don't then resize it like that. Um, it's quite small. Which I have just done. So I'll do it again. 6 by 6. And we've got a little graph and then you can just go through this and color it up however you want it to be so it stands out for you i mean you might want to color these lines in so that's similar all the way across so your analysis is the same as whatever your weak color scheme is and then this is obviously ready to go you just repeat it for the next month however far you want to go and whether you want a graph per month or you want a graph per quarter or per year, it's up to you. But that's basically how you do it. So we've looked at conditional formatting to colour it up. And we've looked at the counting function to get the analysis. And then we've done a graph on that analysis so you can see how it sits in there. So this guy's not been sick very often, so I'll just do a few sicks for him. If you want to do the Bradford factor on this, obviously you're going to have to count the sick occurrences. I've got a video on the Bradford factor if you want to know how that works. Basically, it's um, that would be classed as one sick occurrence, whereas that would also be one, and so would those. But those three would be one sick occurrence. But if you've got lots of S's all over the place, these are red flags, if you like. Somebody's having too many sick days when they're all one day off here and there. No sort of, no sort of. Normally, when you're sick, you're sick for more than one day. So that would be something that you'd, as a HR person, you would have a look at. And the Bradford factor is a great tool for that. But that's all I want to talk about on this little exercise, so hopefully that was of use for you. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.